You ever open up your wardrobe and find your jeans covered in these undesirable lints? You're already late for work and you have to hurriedly find a lint roller, which is nowhere to be found for some reason. Once you find the roller after 5 minutes, you've rolled the lints over and over to get them off your jean. This is exactly what software linting looks like as well. Your project will collect these lints, these undesirable code, these error prone code, if you do not consistently maintain and consistently roll away the quote unquote lints. Here's the formal definition of linting. It's a process to statically analyze code to find undesirable programming errors, potential logical errors, and even stylistic errors. The analysis occurs before compilation or execution and is a way to enforce a certain coding standards that, you know, your de developers or your team can adhere to. In distro specifically, we will be implementing linting using ESLint in Node.js, but the linting concept carries over, you know, to any development environment. So you can implement this in your project or in your team's project or wherever you see it fit in your situation. So let's go over. All right, so here we have a very simple project. Um, it has an entry point index.js. Um, it simply calls this hello string function, which is a simple module that we created right here. Um, so this literally just takes the name and then uh, returns a new string uh, with hello prepended to it. So what we're going to do in this drill is add ESLint into this project on the left side and basically validate the code and, and enforce uh, the standard that we are going to set. So the first step is navigate to the ESLint documentation. And if you click here in the user guide and getting started, it shows you the installation steps and the usage for it. So let's go ahead because we're lazy. We're going to copy pasta this and npm install ESLint save dev. So that's going to download the ESLint package, um, save it and install it in the node modules. And then it's going to, you know, add it as a dependency into this package.json. So that's straightforward. It's going to take just a little bit, a few more seconds. There we go. All right. So let's just verify that. So package.json, ESLint is added as a dev dependency. The uh, uh, package lock is created. Um, so yeah, so ESLint has been created. And let's refer back to the documentation and see the usage. Um, we are going to run the npx ESLint command with the initialize flag here. So what that does is we're going to create a configuration flag so that ESLint knows, you know, what sort of configuration it should run against. So this can be run at any point in your project's life. You know, if you're starting brand new, you can go ahead and just, you know, run it then. If your project is like two or three years old, you can still add it if, if ESLint it already doesn't exist in your uh, project. This just simply creates a configuration file. So ESLint provides this command line tool or command line menu here. Um, so using your arrow buttons, I'm going to check syntax, find problems, and force code style. Um, my project is indeed just JavaScript modules, the ES6 modules. Uh, framework, um, I'm not using any front end stuff in this simple project, so I'm going to choose none of this. But, you know, in your, your case, if you have, you know, like a React component or view component to it, then you can select those. None of this. Does your project use TypeScript? Nope. Uh, where does your code run? Again, uh, so the, if this code doesn't run in the browser because this is just a very simple example, but you know, in your case, you, you might select both of these. I'm going to use a popular style guide. So ESLint, essentially there's three very popular style guides, the Airbnb one, the standard and Google. Um, you know, do, do some research and see whichever fits your need. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to use a standard library or standard configuration. What format do you want your config file to be in? I will select JavaScript. Okay, and I'm going to install all the uh, different dependencies that is required uh, to implement this plugin. So I select yes, and it's going to download all the plugins. It's going to download the ESL config standard uh, configuration, and it's going to just install it all into it, uh, into the node modules folder locally. Just a few more seconds. So, you actually navigate to package.json this should update with all the correct plugins and all the correct uh, dependencies this takes a little bit longer i guess a lot more to download there we go 
All right, so as you can see, it, it, you know, downloaded a bunch of dependencies um, here, and it actually created this eslintrc.js file. So this is where all your eslint configuration lives. Um, as you can see, the environment is es es2021, which is uh, ECMAScript 12. Uh, node, true. This is only going to run in Node. Um, the standard extends the standard uh, configuration that the community has set. Um, as you know, it, it's just a compilation of basically all the quote unquote best practices. Um, module, yeah, and there we go. So at, from this point on, you can actually run um, ESLint. So let's try that ESLint or MPX, ESLint, and then we're going to run it on the current directory. So it should run it against all our different files. Now we get this weird error here. And the reason why this error is being thrown is because in my project, I'm defining this as module, right? So all of our JS scripts are read as um, ES6. Well, but as you can see here, this actually is the common JS uh, method of exporting. So as a result, the only workaround that I uh, was able to do is basically rename this as CJS which forces Node to read this as a common JS um, module. Um, this might be fixed later in later future versions of ESLint, but for now, that's the only workaround. You know, easily, you can just maybe even, you know, during the configuration step, just use a JSON object. Um, then you wouldn't run into this problem. But I wanted to show you specifically that, you know, you might run into some problems like this, and that's why I use JavaScript instead. Okay. So... Setting after we set that after we change this, so this will run ESLint correctly. MPX ESLint working directory. Voila, there we go. So this is uh, what ESLint does. It runs through all your files. Oh, well, first it reads the configuration file, and then it runs through all your files and looks for problems, or, or, or problems in your code that are different from what's defined in this standard um, configuration. So let's look index.js extra semicolon, extra semicolon, expected space or tab after a comment. So let's look at the standard configuration that we're actually using. So this is the GitHub ESLint config standard for this standard configuration that we're extending. And let's look at the rules that it's actually implementing. Here, there's a bunch of different rules here. The one I'm looking for is the semi rule that my code is violating. Semi, if we actually search for semi, aha. The rule, the standard rule enforces to throw an error whenever this rule is violated. So what is this rule exactly? Um, in order to find that out, you, you can look at the rules section in the ESLint uh, webpage. Let's look at rules and look for semi. Here we go. So require or disallow semicolons instead of ASI. As you can see, um, the standard rule enforces that all lines don't end with a semicolon. In order to simply fix this, what you can do is pass in the fix flag, then ESLint will automatically try to fix whatever error that it sees. As you can see, ESLint fixed it and there is no more error. So if we run this, there we go. There is no error message. So that this means that all of our code passes the standard configuration tests. As you can see, the semicolons have been removed. And then the comment, there's a space in the comment now. So ESLint went ahead and fixed all of this for us. Now, let's just say in your organization, you know, you really want to use semicolons, right? And you want to not adhere to that semicolon rule. You want to use everything else that the standard um, configuration is providing, but you let's say you want to use semicolons. You can override rules in your configuration right here by passing in the rule name, which in our case is semi, and then either turning it on, off, error, warning. So let's save that. And then let's add semicolons. So now ESLint is not going to throw an error regarding semicolons. There we go. As you can see, 
you know, it, it didn't do anything. Um, so these are, these were, these, the semicolon rule was excluded, uh, when ESL ran. So that's how you override, um, basic rules. Generally, you would want to extend, you know, the three popular, the three popular configurations that was provided in the configuration. And then depending on your need, you can override or whatever, remove different rules whenever you need to. All right. So let's force, let's actually force, um, an ESLint error here. Um, the one I'm going to force is a debugger. So no debugger. This rule states, if we actually go to the rules section again, and then let's look for this. No debugger. This rule doesn't allow this debugger line to exist. So if I add this, I'm going to simply force this debugger error. And if I run a save. And then I run ESLint, it's going to catch this. It's going to say, hey, there's a debugger. This is not allowed, so don't do it. So what you do as a developer is you look at this and you say, oh, there's something weird going on here. And you go back to this file and say, oh, I have a debugger statement here. You remove it. Save the new file, run ESLint again. All right, there we go. None of the rules are violated and we're good to go.